All right. So a lot of patients ask me, what can you help with functional blood chemistry? Uh, we get the calls like all day. And sometimes we get inquiries into our website too. And so I'm going to make a video here telling you what we can and can't help here. Okay. Keep in mind that with functional blood chemistry, uh, we are, we're not doing a diagnosis and a treatment. What we're doing is what's called an evaluation. We're evaluating the different organ systems and then supporting them with diet, exercise, supplementation, and uh, proper sleep and restoration. Okay. So the number one thing that we can help are blood sugar issues. Okay. A lot of people think that blood sugar issues is like, okay, this person has diabetes. But before you develop diabetes, you actually, <clears throat> you start to get blood sugar issues. This, is, this can be called metabolic syndrome, syndrome X, prediabetes, insulin resistance. All these things are names for very similar, if not the same thing, okay? But we can actually see that happening in the patient. Usually years or even decades, the person becomes diabetic and help them. Okay. Right now, from when I was doing the research on it, there is no treatment for prediabetes. Okay. But if you take the proper steps with diet, exercise, supplementation, um, <clears throat> sleep, hygiene, and stress reduction. Okay. I have seen it in black and white reverse in almost every single case. Okay. So that's the first thing that we can help. The next thing is you can see a lot of vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Uh, when you use functional blood chemistry. Uh, the common ones that we see are, of course, vitamin D, zinc. Those are the ones that are in the press these days, but also B1, B6, B9, B12, um, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, uh, molybdenum. That's an uncommon one, but you do see that. Copper, iron, all these types of things. And you can assess whether you have um, good levels, too much, too little, and what you need to do about it but you can find that all with functional blood chemistry. Very, very good. Digestive issues. <clears throat> there are certain markers that show about your digestive function. Um, they have to do with actually how you digest proteins and how it shows up in your blood markers and also um, your inflammatory markers because if you have a gut issue, you're going to have high inflammatory markers a lot of the time. And it'll also show immune system function and dysfunction, which is also um, a reflection of how your digestive system is working. Hormonal issues. You see this all the time. People say, I have, I'm hormonally challenged, or I have hormonal problems, or I think I have a hormonal problem here. What's really cool is that there are more specialized tests for showing hormonal issues. But what I can tell you is, is that if you have functional blood chemistry and you get everything balanced, usually the hormones will get back into balance. But specifically, you will find hidden adrenal, thyroid, and pituitary, one of the glands in your brain, find adrenal, thyroid, pituitary um, issues all the time on blood tests. And what you can do then is you can give the person a course of treatment and then you can do a follow-up. If needed, we can follow up the functional blood chemistry with uh, different hormonal testing too, which is we can target, you know, the adrenal response, the thyroid, we can, um, uh, the ovaries, the uterus, testicles, stuff like that. Okay, but we always start with functional blood chemistry. It's much cheaper and it's, it gives a much broader range of information. Okay. Immune system issues. I was already talking about this with digestive issues, but there's a ton of information about the immune system and also uh, inflammation and pain in your blood tests. Okay, it's under the white blood cell indices. Your body has, when it's um, fighting an infection or actually when it's responding to inflammation, you have white blood cells and they're made up into five specific types. There's what's called uh, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. And depending on what the ratios are, they can tell you, they can allude to what your body is challenged with. Is it like, is it an acute thing? Is it an acute infection? Is it a chronic infection? Does it look more bacterial? Does it look more, look more viral? Does it look more like a parasite? Does it look more like a fungus? All this type of information you can get from functional blood chemistry. Fatigue. There's lots of reasons for, for, uh, for fatigue, from dehydration to blood sugar issues, to um, too little iron, too much iron, um, to vitamin mineral deficiencies, immune system challenges, all those things you can pick up with functional blood chemistry. And then I said many more issues. Pretty much anything that goes wrong with a person is going to be reflected in your blood, be it fatigue, anxiety, depression, immune system issues, hormonal issues, 
digestive issues, um, vitamin and mineral deficiencies, uh, what else, inflammation, pain, they're all going to be reflected in your blood chemistry. And that's the reason why we do it. All right, thanks.